This is not how we planned it. He was supposed to be a patsy. Why? Because we don't want conscripted criminals at the top of our ranks. What does that say about the rest of us? A man who was the lowest of the low, destined to live out the rest of his days rotting in a cell, and now he's a war hero. It makes us look desperate. I suppose we should be happy that he's fighting on our side, but it just doesn't sit right with me. Not everyone feels that way though. Some of the other soldiers gave him a nickname. They call him The Conqueror. The For Honor currently features 12 playable characters and 4 character classes. Today we're going to talk about The Conqueror, a heavy class. Specializing in defense, the Conqueror sacrifices most of his offensive power for superior protection. Winning most fights through a mind-numbing attrition, he's a warrior that many love to hate. His simple moveset is wildly effective and will cause impatient opponents to lose their minds long before they've lost the battle. The Conqueror has three basic attack chains and the ability to charge his heavy attacks for increased damage. He has the special characteristic of not being able to feint his attacks, so sending out an isolated light or heavy is generally a bad idea. Thankfully, the rest of his kit centers around guaranteeing his predictable hits connect. The Conqueror's shield bash isn't just his bread and butter, it's the whole damn sandwich. Landing a successful shield bash will deal stamina damage as well as guarantee you a light attack. Shield bash can splat enemies against walls and doing so will guarantee a heavy attack. In some cases, splatting an enemy against a wall will allow you to land multiple heavy attacks, but this consumes a lot of stamina. Your shield bashes do drain your opponent's stamina, but chaining shield bashes and heavy attacks will drain your stamina faster than it drains your opponent's. The most interesting part about the Conqueror are his defense options. He has a superior block property, which means all enemy combos are halted on a successful block. Blocking an attack opens up an opponent for a guard break, but this can be countered. The Conqueror's heavy attacks also have a superior block property, which means they can be used for a swift counterattack. This counterattack can be defended against if your timing is poor. Finally, the Conqueror can activate a full block stance. Toggling this stance will allow you to block attacks from all directions. This stance drains stamina over time, and each blocked attack drains additional stamina. Exiting full block stance will disable your stamina regeneration for approximately 5 seconds, and finally, becoming exhausted while in full block stance will cause you to fall to the ground, and your exhaustion recovery won't kick in until after the 5 second stamina regeneration delay wears off. As a side note, activating full block stance can be used to cancel attacks at the cost of stamina and stamina regeneration. Like I mentioned before, the Conqueror's Shield Bash is his main tool. Because of this, you'll want to use it as often as possible, but that's not always the best idea. Like with any character, being predictable will get you punished, and even though the Conqueror's Shield Bash is a relatively safe maneuver, it's not unstoppable. Aggressive opponents will hit you with a light attack while you're trying to send out the bash. Furthermore, Shield Bash is your main offensive opener, and as a defensive character, you'll want to carefully consider when you go on the attack. The question is, when do you go on the attack? This character might not be labeled as a counterattacker, but he relies on an attack-counterattack style. Here's what I mean. Your opponent spends stamina to attack you and you block their attacks. Now they're low on stamina, questioning their life decisions and the balance of the game. While they're preoccupied with figuring out how to word their Reddit post about how annoying it is to fight a conqueror, that's your opportunity to strike. A shield bash can exhaust a low stamina opponent and a subsequent guard break throw will knock them down to the toddler position. From there, you can land a partially charged heavy attack and follow up with a shield bash. On that note, charged heavies are the most powerful aspect of the conqueror's kit. While you're winding up your ball and chain, you create a controlled situation with only a few possible outcomes. While you're charging your heavy attack, you cannot counter guard break and opponents that know this will try to break you. If you've got good timing, you can send out your attack just as they're closing the gap and punish them severely. Next up, opponents can simply try to hit you where you're not guarding. And sure, blocking is easy, but sometimes we mess up. When you shift your guard to the right spot, a properly timed charge-heavy superior block will leave your opponent in ruins. 
The last and least enjoyable outcome for this situation is to reset to neutral position, and this is done when your opponent simply backs far outside of your effective range, leaving you unable to chase them down. You might say it's kind of like having a blue ball and chain. The most important thing to note about the Conqueror is that he cannot faint. Nine times out of ten, if he or she is getting impatient and they throw out an attack, you can and should parry it. But here's where things get interesting. In a long drawn out battle between a conqueror and someone that understands that you're neither invincible nor unstoppable, you've got one special trick. Canceling a normal heavy attack or a charged heavy attack with your full block stance will confuse the hell out of someone who's expecting your typical direct assault. It's a risky move and when it doesn't work, it'll leave your stamina unable to charge. But against a tough opponent, sometimes you have to take big risks for pretty average rewards. Last but certainly not least, I have to reiterate, the Conqueror specializes in defense. He's much stronger while protecting himself and looking for openings than when he's swinging wildly hoping for a hit. Every once in a while, you'll get lucky and chain multiple light attacks against an unsuspecting foe, but generally speaking, your goal with this character is to watch and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. In 4 vs 4 content, the Conqueror is a juggernaut. He excels at keeping objectives locked down versus a single or multiple opponents, protecting the front lines and mowing down fields of soldiers, and in team fights, his shield bash can keep a revenging opponent locked down. He's not nearly as versatile as some of the other cast members, but he's great at what he was designed for. Now it's time for the class matchups. Assassins aren't difficult to fight with the Conqueror, but they're very annoying. It's like having a fly buzzing around your apartment and you can't seem to squash it. I can't count the number of times I've gotten Orochi, Peacekeepers, and Berserkers to their last sliver of health only to have them turn tail and run. Other defense-oriented characters like the Warlord and Lawbringer pose an actual threat to the Conqueror. They both have more tools at their disposal and they have similar playstyles, which means number one, the battle is going to take an eternity and number two, victory will be decided by who can make better use of their moves. And because the Conqueror has such a limited set of moves, he has to do more with less if he wants to best his opponent. Overall, the Conqueror is a very powerful character with a few weaknesses. He's slow, he's predictable, and with the exception of his charging attacks, he does very little damage. So there you go, this has been an overview of The Conqueror. As always, the name of the game is For Honor, the name of the channel is iBlueAir JGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.